these thrones come from the Cameroon grass fields in West Africa and they were made for royalty in that region. The uh, kings and chiefs were always in competition with each other. They actually liked to visually express their prowess and their glory and their pride. Everything in this throne denotes royal power. The portrayal of the people, the materials, the beadwork, even the wood which comes from a tree that's reserved for the king. Everything about this throne screams royalty to people who are familiar with the culture in this region. The beading was done by special artists who specialized in attaching pieces of cloth to the throne and then they were beading them one by one. So it took an immense amount of time to make a throne like this. It took years. If you look at the king, he's wearing a necklace with a chevron bead. They came from Italy mostly. They were royal beads. There are also cowrie shells on the throne. These two were imported because Pansoa, the kingdom, is not at the coast. And so again, they were a very, very important indicator of wealth and access to wealth and connectedness as well. There is not really likeness in, in the sense of likeness in European art. It's the social persona that they're depicting. The queen mother or, or first wife is actually holding a calabash, which is used for palm wine. The king is holding a drinking horn, a royal horn. Again, it's a ritual object, and that's the horn that would be filled by the wife or the queen mother with palm wine during ceremonies. Normally, thrones like this are kept in storage areas and they're only being brought out for annual ceremonies. That's a moment when everybody in the crowd can see them, but other than that, they're hidden from sight. Seating in general is very, very important. If you're a commoner, you don't have a seat. You're not even allowed to sit on anything more than maybe a stool made from a block of stone or raffia. If you're an elite person, then you have access to carved figurative stools if you are actually a king, then you have access and you can sit on the highest elevation possible, which is a throne like this. When he sits on the throne, his body touches the throne and so it accumulates power over time. And not everybody, even in the palace, is allowed to touch it because it has that power, it's sacred in a way. When the uh, first photographers came to the region, many of the kings embraced being photographed very early on. They were very composed. They never allow you to photograph them in a candid way, for instance. So that holds true to this very day. They have power, and they have power here. They're sacred. They're objects that we have to treat very carefully and with reverence and with honor.